In this task, we'll explore the use of data dictionaries and selecting records by attributes. So here I have QGIS desktop open, and I've loaded the state 2010 census layer, and I've gone ahead and put the map into a CONUS Albers projection, EPSG code 5070. So let's examine the attributes we have to work with. I'll right click on the layer and choose open attribute table from the context menu, and the attribute table opens up. There's a lot of attribute columns. However, the field names are cryptic. It's clear that a naming convention has been used, but there's no way to understand what data is contained in each field by the field names alone. And I'm talking about the fields that start here that all have the same naming convention. Such naming conventions are often a necessity as you're limited to 10 characters for a field name in a shapefile. Fortunately, in this case, the data creator has provided a data dictionary. And this is a table containing descriptions of the data in each of these fields. So I'm going to close the attribute table. I'm going to add that data dictionary table. I'll use the Add Vector Data button. And this is contained in a spreadsheet. I'm going to browse to the Lab 3 data folder. And this DB table description spreadsheet is the table that I want. I'll click Open and Open. And I can see my table's been added to my Layers panel. So I've been asked to map the male population under age 5 for the lower 48. To determine which field contains that data in my state 2010 census layer, I'm going to open up this data dictionary table by right clicking on it and choosing open attribute table. Let me resize this so we can see it a little better. This column here has the total, so everything that follows that is the universe of everyone broken into age categories, and then we have the male section here. And I'm looking for males under five. So the column I'd be looking for in the state's attribute table is DP0010021. Now that I know which field has the data I'm interested in, I can get to work. So I'm going to close this table, and now I'm going to style the 2010 census layer by double-clicking on it to open up the layer properties, choosing the Style tab, and instead of a single symbol renderer, I'm going to choose a graduated renderer. I know what data column I'm going to use now, so I'm going to scroll down until I find that. I'm going to choose a mode of quantile, which is an algorithm that tries to put the same number of features into each class. I'll keep the default five classes and the blue color ramp, and I'll click OK. So now that we've mapped that data, I'm going to cover how to select features by attributes. So I'm going to right click on this layer, and from the context menu again, choose open attribute table. And I'll expand this so it's a little wider so we can see more of the data. To select records in this attribute table, I'm going to use the Select by Expression button. So the Select by Expression window opens up. So I've mapped the states by the under 5 male population. Now I want to know which states also have a total population less than 1 million. So let me start just by explaining to you the layout of this Select by Expression window. There's a functions list in the middle. And I can expand the fields and values section to see all the attribute columns in my table. There's a suite of operators up here that I can use. And then finally, this is the expression window on the left. Double clicking on fields and operators places those objects into the expression window. And it's best to build your expression this way instead of trying to type it into the expression window. This will allow you to avoid syntax errors. Finally, there's several select options in the lower right hand corner. By default, you'll create a new selection. However, you can choose to add an already existing selection, have records removed from an existing selection, or select from an existing selected set. So to build my expression, first I'll need to refer to the data dictionary to see which field contains the total population. I've gone ahead and done that. It's field DP0010001, which is this one right here. So I'm going to double click on that column to add it to my expression window. And then I'm going to use the less than operator. I can expand operators and find that less than operator here. Double click on that. Since I want a specific numeric value, I'll just type it in here, 1 million. I could choose this DP001 field. And in this values window, choose all unique to see if there's a value of exactly 1 million. In a case like this, just typing in the value without thousand separator commas is usually the best bet. Also note that numeric values don't receive quotes. So you can see there is syntax. The field received double quotes. 
there's my operator, and the numeric value is just typed in, again without any punctuation. This is why it's best to click your way through populating this window. So to select those records, I'll click the Select button, and I'll close my window. You can see the selected records appear in the table. And down in the lower left, there's a table filter. By default, it's showing all the features, but here I'll choose to just show the selected features. So now I'm viewing just the seven selected records. Nice thing about this is I can sort them. So I can sort this total population column and see which state has the largest population of those. Now I'll close the attribute table and note the corresponding features are selected on the map as well. So there's a link between the spatial features and the attribute table. In the next task, you'll conduct a small analysis using a buffer operation and a select features by location to identify parcels affected by a tornado.